The photoelectric effect involves one of the most important experiments for modern chemistry because it's what Albert Einstein used to show that light can behave like a particle. Now when particles interact, we expect one particle to simply bounce off of another particle and conserve energy in the process. Now before this experiment, we thought that light would not really interact in this sort of classical mechanics definition. However, what this experiment showed is that if you shoot a photon at an electron, it would behave in this exact same way. Energy would be conserved and classical mechanics would be obeyed as if this incident light were a particle. Now, one of the things that I really, really like about the photoelectric effect is that it is simply a restatement of the conservation of energy. And that is, in order to really understand it, you have to first buy into this idea that the total energy applied is equal to the potential energy, which I'm gonna write as an EV, plus the kinetic energy. Now what we're going to get into and what I hope to prove with this video is the idea that this right here is the energy of the incident light or the energy of a photon. And right here we have the potential energy and the kinetic energy And this all applies to the electrons. And so before we get into the experiment, I'm actually going to write out the formula that I hope to prove through this experiment. And that is that the E photon, which we can actually express as H nu, is equal to the potential energy, and that is the interaction between the electrons and the surface of the metal we give that the phi term plus the kinetic energy. So that's the energy that the electron has when it is ejected from the metal surface, and that is going to be one half mv squared. So this is going to be our working formula for this interaction. But now let's get into the actual experiment. So the way this experiment works is I have a metal right here. And in any metallic solid, you have the sea of electrons where the electrons can absolutely be excited. And if the energy is strong enough, those electrons can be totally emitted from that metal surface. And they're going to be captured in this circuit. And we're going to measure the current to see the rate and the magnitude of the flow of electrons. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pretty low energy visible light. I'm going to shoot a red light. I'm really going to exaggerate this wavelength. And what I'm going to notice is that absolutely nothing happens. We see that the red light shines on the metal surface, but we don't detect any sort of current. And this is actually extremely important because this is what classical mechanics would have predicted. If light behaves like a wave, there should be absolutely no interaction. And so if we just stop this experiment right here, we would reach the conclusion that classical mechanics is correct. Light is a wave and it does not interact with the electrons on a metallic surface. However, if we decrease the wavelength of light here and increase the energy, so say we jumped up to a blue light. See, I'm exaggerating the wavelength here. And now, all of a sudden, we start to detect a current. So I shoot one photon of blue light, and then one electron comes flying off. And my question is, how are we going to quantify this? Well, what we said earlier is that the total energy applied is just the energy of the photon. So this blue light, we can say, is E photon. 
And then if we measure the velocity of this electron, we can actually determine the kinetic energy because the kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. But these terms are definitely not equal to each other because there's one other force that we had to overcome and that's the force between the electrons and the metallic surface. So there is a potential energy term that exists between the electron and the metal surface. That is what we would call the work function. So the work function is equal to the potential energy that exists between the electron and the metallic surface. I think that's the third time I've said that, but it's just that important. And the idea here is that that is an electrostatic interaction and it is a potential energy. So if we wanted to fully quantify this system, we would say that the energy of the photon is equal to the sum of the work function plus the kinetic energy, which is exactly what this formula right here is saying. But I don't want to stop there. As revolutionary as it was to say that this high energy light does interact with electrons and eject electrons from a metal surface, I want to see what other forces are at play. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just crank up the light energy a little bit more. So now I'm going to bring in a UV light. And once again, I shoot one photon at the surface and one electron comes flying out. But it's important to realize in this case that this electron is traveling faster. And so my conclusion would be that if that work function is reached, so if my photon energy is greater than my work function, if I increase the energy of the photon. I'm increasing the kinetic energy of my ejected electron and I'm also by extension increasing the velocity of that ejected electron. And that's a very important conclusion to make. But again, I don't want to stop there. So the last thing I'm going to bring into play is this idea of intensity. So now what happens if I made this ultraviolet light a little bit brighter. Now brightness is going to correlate with intensity. And the way I like to define this from a chemistry sense is the number of photons. And so now instead of just shooting one ultraviolet photon at the metal surface, why don't I add two more? And students tend to make two conclusions. One is right and one is wrong. The wrong conclusion is to say that the energy triples. So the kinetic energy of the electron will increase by that same factor. And that's not quite right because the energy in this equation here is per photon. So increasing the intensity is only going to change the number of photons with this sufficient energy. And so the actual effect of intensity is going to be that three electrons in this experiment are now ejected with equal maximum kinetic energy and velocity. So the way I like to write this is as intensity goes up, the number of electrons goes up. And this is only if that photon energy is sufficient. Because until that photon energy is greater than the work function, this formula itself is definitely not even in play because we haven't overcome the potential energy that exists between the electron and the metallic surface, just like we saw in trial one with the red light. So lastly, what I want to do is I want to collect these fundamental ideas and apply them to a pretty challenging question. And this question is going to deal with 
pretty much the maximum extent of applying the formula that we used in the previous question. So let me write this formula one more time where the E photon is equal to the work function or the potential energy between the electron and the metal surface plus the kinetic energy of the electron after it is ejected. The question here is platinum has a work function equal to 1.017 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. What is the maximum velocity of an electron ejected when a 110 nanometer photon is shined on the metal surface? So what's happening here is you have a photon being shot in. It has a wavelength equal to 110 nanometers. And then an electron is being ejected. And we're asked about the velocity of that electron. So we're going to utilize this formula to its maximum extent here. And we want to make sure that we can totally break it down. So in this question, we are asked to find the velocity and the velocity is definitely going to be embedded in this kinetic energy term. So I want to set this equation up so that I have the kinetic energy is equal to the difference between the photon energy and the work function. And this is just restating this equation. And just as a general path, to the right answer. I know that once I get that kinetic energy, that's going to be equal to one half mv squared. And I can go all the way to isolating velocity to say that velocity is equal to two times that kinetic energy divided by mass. And then I take the square root of all of that. And so this is the general path that I'm going to take to get to the right answer. But you want to recognize that there will be unit conversions along the way. So let's go ahead and take this step by step. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out what this actual E photon is because I'm provided with a wavelength and not an energy term. And one thing that I know is that E photon is equal to H nu which is the Planck's constant times the frequency. But I also know that the frequency is related to wavelength with an inverse proportionality. So I can sub in for frequency by saying that the energy is also equal to H times C over lambda. And that's what I'm going to use to get that energy of the photon. So let's go ahead and solve for it. If I have Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, times the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, I'm going to divide that by the wavelength. But notice how I have nanometers, and that's definitely not going to work with the units that I have. So I need to take that 110 nanometers, and convert it into meters. And the way I'm going to do that is for every meter, I have 10 to the 9 nanometers. So this bottom term immediately becomes 1.1 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And I plug all of this into my calculator. And I'm going to get that the E photon, the photon energy, is equal to a very funky number. 1.807090091 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Now I'm keeping this entire trail of digits because I want to emphasize the fact that with these giant calculations, with these very big or very, very tiny exponents, you want to remember to store all of these digits in your calculator. It's not going to be enough to round this to 1.81 and just call it a day and keep it simple. You need to store these values on your calculator if you want an accurate answer in the end. So I've got this giant number and that's my E photon. And I'm going to take the difference between this and my work function, 
which is provided in the question 1.017 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And that is going to be equal to my kinetic energy, which I'm going to go ahead and bring all the way over here. The kinetic energy is equal to 7.9009009 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that, if we trust our math, is the kinetic energy of the electron ejected. Now, conceptually speaking, this is the difference between the total energy applied through that incident photon minus the potential energy it took to eject that electron from the metal surface. So all of that excess energy that exists after the potential energy of the electron has been overcome goes straight into kinetic energy. And that is the value we get. It looks like a tiny value, but remember, this is for one electron. So let's see how that translates into velocity. So if we use this equation right here, we say that the velocity is equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, we can get to the final answer. So the velocity is equal to the square root of two times this giant number, and I'm even going to write this out again, 7.9009009 times 10 to the negative 19 joules divided by, and remember, this is the velocity of an electron. So we need to use the mass of an electron. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And remember that we are totally okay to keep this in kilograms because we're dealing with joules, which is equal to kilograms meters squared per second squared. And so if you're focusing on the units and how they cancel out, we're actually dividing out kilograms and then that square root is killing both of these exponents. And so we're actually going to end up with perfect units for velocity. And our final value is going to be equal to 1317025.979 meters per second. And that is going to be equal to, if we rounded to, say, three significant figures, 1.32 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. 